Hey everyone, this is Martin from howtomakemobilegames.com on September the 12th, 2016. It's a Monday here in Shanghai, China, 8.30 p.m. in the evening. Uh, this video is about how much money we made in August 2016. I've been doing these videos sort of every two weeks or every month roughly and doing a summary telling everyone how much money we made on our mobile games on Google, Amazon, iOS together through the ad networks. Uh, mainly through the ad networks and some in-app purchases as well. So this is one of those videos guys. Um, just to, so you know, people who are seeing this on the free channel of YouTube, you might see around 20-25%, but the full video is available on the pro YouTube channel and also in the pro section of the howtomakemobilegames.com forum. So uh, that is uh, $3 per month if you want to subscribe and if you, you have a two week free trial on YouTube if you want that. If you don't want it, you can just cancel at any point and then you won't be charged, of course, or you know, if you subscribe for one month, then you can cancel at any point through PayPal if you're subscribed to the forum. So FYI, if you do see a part of this video, then that's, that's where it'll be if you're... Uh, and I'll put the description in the link as well. Uh, this past uh, couple of weeks, uh, just a general update for those of you who I've not spoken to in a while. I know a few guys have been posting on the uh, pro section of the forum. Um, uh, on my side personally, when I've been finding time, I've been working on a new VR game, and uh, which is also going to be cross-platform on mobile as well. I'm hoping to get that finished in the next, um, well hopefully this month for version 1, maybe next month. It's really hard to define the timelines for these things because obviously it's a game and it's different each time you make it. And because of my time working on things like, you know, videos and also managing the staff and publishing things and money, revenue summaries and all that stuff, uh, I don't have like full time towards programming. So, but I'm working on the game now and that's been pretty interesting. It's my first time to actually build, uh, personally build something in Unity with uh, targeting VR. And that was pretty interesting and, and it was really fast to get going as well. I, all I did was plug in the Oculus and I'm working on a MacBook Pro. So the Oculus is very slow. So it's interesting, I'm working within uh, the constrictions of, of, a, of like a low frame rate and so I'm trying to build something which should work well on a MacBook Pro. And if it works well on a MacBook Pro, it should work well on pretty much most of the VR enabled mobile devices and obviously like PCs which are even, you know, maybe medium range gaming PCs should, you know, absolutely fly. So with those constraints of working on a MacBook Pro, it should it should work pretty well. Uh, what I'm doing right now is uh, adding in multiplayer to the game, so using the new Unity multiplayer framework that came in version 5. Uh, that's I just started to add that in the past couple of days. I already added in leaderboards. Uh, but the Unity networking thing, I was thinking about, well, should I do levels, should I do multiplayer, yes or no? And I thought multiplayer because it's very much sort of a, a top-down kind of shooting game and multiplayer is obviously, I mean for me anyway, is the most fun thing uh, to play when it comes to games. Uh, simple multi multiplayer games are absolutely uh, great. You know, so short sessions, but very easy to pick up and play and multiplayer as well. And I've been integrating that the past couple of days and that's been uh, an interesting learning curve. I have done some multiplayer before in Unity uh, probably um, for me it was probably two years ago now and I was using the Photon network but I decided to go with the integrated Unity one because that means no SDKs and it's always going to be supported or it should be unless they do a major upgrade and some things get deprecated but when they do the upgrade that the code that is deprecated i.e. it's old code should get updated to new code and you might need to do some fix changes but they usually don't do that between uh, um, subversions. They only usually do deprecations, I think, during major versions like Unity 5 to Unity 6, for example. So, but it's interesting because it's caning my brain. Oh my god, it really canes your brain doing Unity multiplayer the first time, anyway. I, like I said, mine was two years ago when I first started to do that, but it's it really, really pushes your brain and it's it's a good thing. It's like I'm flexing my muscles. It's like a not done exercise in years and then all of a sudden I'm doing like you know training for the Ironman competition and I've got to work out 12 hours a day. Uh, the concepts of multiplayer you know having the server and the client uh, the instantiated objects which are also mirrored on the client but who has control over them who um, uh, is it the server or the client that manages the uh, 
uh, spawning of objects and that's the, that's the server side but when you call something on the server and you update it you then have to call an RPC on the client side and it's really uh, confusing at first but I've got my head sort of around it and it's basically like okay uh, let the server control everything sorry the screen just went blank uh, let the server control everything uh, apart from local player input so that is let the server control the spawning of objects uh, that are not player specific objects uh, so for example spawning AI spawning bullets let the server handle the health okay so for example if you've got two players so you've got two players, uh, one player, two player, and on the server side you can obviously see the two players, on the low, on the uh, client side you can obviously see the two players, but only handle the health update on the server side, and then those changes will get applied through a, a remote procedure call, an RPC, onto the client side. And when you've got two players, just two players alone, that gets, you, you have to wrap your head around it. So I'm in that head wrapping phase right now, which is, um, which is pretty difficult to do, uh, but uh, I'm slowly getting there anyway. So the goal is for that one to release uh, a VR game and uh, a mobile game probably at the same time, but I'm, I'm first thing is getting this multiplayer in there uh, when I've got time and seeing what works well and hopefully giving a, a, a beta version out to you guys on the pro section and having a play and see what you think. Uh, hopefully you find it fun. Uh, the other stuff that we're doing is building two new VR games now as well. Uh, one of the things that we did do recently, I've mentioned it for the past year, that we've been working on a VR game um, since sort of like July last year, 2015. We've actually put that project on hold for the moment because uh, it's it's taking a long time. It was a lot bigger than what we planned and there's a lot more things in it than what we originally kind of scoped. And I thought, you know, well, maybe what well, we thought together that, oh, in six months or five months, yeah, we can get a pretty good demo out and people can play it. It just took way longer than what was originally planned. So what we've done is we've moved on to doing some smaller VR games uh, in the meantime. Uh, so we're doing that now and the goal is with the VR games is to get them into the market uh, both overseas as in um, you know the Western app stores and then also in China with some of the publishers here. Uh, some of the publishers that I've spoke to who have their own VR platforms, their own VR app stores are looking for content. Uh, obviously because they've got their headsets ready, they've got their app stores ready, they're going out to the users but there's just not enough content for them right now. So they're kind of eager to get on content, uh, to get more content. So what we're, uh, there's both PC and Android based ones and so that's going to be interesting to find out to see if that's a better revenue source than the currently Red Ocean, you know, uh, dog eat dog mobile landscape which is the app stores now which I've been complaining and moaning about every single day for like the past, I don't know, however many years now. Uh, but the, the Red Ocean, Red Ocean meaning that uh, it's an extremely competitive marketplace, super, super competitive, way too many oversaturated um, uh, marketplace with way too many apps. And so it, there needs to be some kind of new area that we focus on. Uh, moving in slightly into VR, whether that'll be different or not, I don't know. We might publish the games on Google Play and iOS as well, but it's just again it's just another ocean of, of you know blood because uh, there's a lot of VR games out already not not as many as normal VR games but yeah quite a lot uh, and we need to figure out how to diversify or, or specialize in an area which isn't quite as competitive because uh, you know month on month as I'm about to show in a moment is our revenue stays the same even though we are releasing more games and we even released some games on Windows uh, Windows Mobile just uh, I think one or two months ago. Uh, so we've released more and more and more and more games over the past two years, uh, three years, and it's just gone higher and higher. But the revenue has not. And in most cases, the revenue has actually gone down, uh, especially on our Panda Tap Games side. Um, that is the truth of mobile games now. If anybody says to me, hey, should I develop mobile games? I would probably say no. You know, um, it depends what you want to do it for. If you want to build it as a business, I'd say no, try something else. Would you try VR? I don't know uh, if I would suggest that right now because I don't know the numbers. I don't know specifically how much can be made. So we need a new business model to uh, supplement our current business model. I'm not talking about closing down anything. I'm just saying that we need to uh, find a new area because it's it's highly, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, discouraging when we want to focus on a particular area like we're doing right now with FPS games and we're thinking, oh, this this might work, yeah, let's get better and better and better at this game. 
this type of game, but every month we're getting the, the market pressure is pushing us down and down and down and down and kicking us. Um, so, I, and I was speaking with our publishing manager before we had a call, and it was basically uh, we were talking about the same thing as well. It's not that our games are not amazing because our games are not amazing. They're, they're you know they're they're okay. They're so so. Some are some are not so good. Some are okay. Yeah, D to be openly honest, because it's very difficult for us to make um, oh, the photos loading. Very difficult for us to make good games in a two week period. Very very difficult. Um, you know, I we can't expect anybody to make a great game in two weeks. Really, it's just it's just getting the game onto the store, making some app revenue. Um, so I, we were saying this before. I lost my trail of thought there. Uh, about uh, it doesn't matter if our games are very good or not. It, it really doesn't matter. Uh, are our screenshots are good or not? Yeah, we might increase the downloads a little bit. We might do. Uh, whether we do an FPS game or a car game, again, doesn't matter very much because they're all so so competitive. There are thousands upon thousands of games. Uh, and so it's not about how well we do, how good we make the game, even though that is a factor, definitely. It's more about, is this uh, a good market to go into? Is it a good business model? Is it super competitive? Is it? Uh, and that's making me think more along the business lines of um, looking at something from um, maybe an investor standpoint, if I can say that, but analyzing the market first and figuring out, oh, hey, do, does it make money? I remember plenty of articles like over the past couple of years and starting probably 2013 which is like most app developers live below the poverty line and that's true.